Hi there, Lloyd Macedo speaking to you from LloydMacedo.com, who is Lloyd Macedo, Think Personal Branding. Okay, um, just a small little video that I wanted to share with you. Um, you know, there are a lot of expatriates who, who work in the Middle East. And uh, once they come to the Middle East, they assume that, you know, they're going to stay for a very long time. And uh, everyone has, like, positive aspirations about the future. Okay, like I always tell, uh, nobody gets married uh, assuming or thinking about a divorce. Nobody starts a business thinking that, oh, one day I'll have to shut it down. But then it just happens, you know, life happens like they say. So um, uh, given the fact that I, I guess I'm one of, I don't know, maybe the only YouTube channel that speaks about expatriates from UAE, um, I... I don't know how many other people do that. And uh, given the fact that I uh, share the good, bad, ugly, the negative side, uh, I, I guess a lot of people like to open up to me and share what they are going through or they have gone through or their experiences. So one of the categories of people that nobody talks about is people who have been in the UAE for many years and uh, who have left the UAE. Okay, now I, I find this this category of people really interesting because uh, Nobody talks about them much and they don't open up to anyone. The reason being is it's you feel like a failure You feel like you went to achieve something big and you didn't succeed. So uh, Not many people want to open up. So this particular message that I received uh, This is a guy who worked in um, UAE for nearly 15 years, okay, 15 plus years. Uh, obviously, he requested me not to share his uh, specifics. Um, so what he did is he shared with me a couple of uh, thoughts that he had, the experience that he went through, because I asked him, like, okay, you have 15 years in the UAE and now you've gone back to India. How is the situation? Now, mind you, there are people who say that they are going through a good time. There are people who are saying that, oh, you know, I was able to adjust. But then there are stories like these where uh, they are going through a tough time. Okay, so this is what he has said. I'll read out exactly what he has written. But yes, I have kept his details confidential. So this is what he said. I asked him, like, uh, can you tell me what are the challenges that you went through in terms of going to the uh, Middle East? Uh, sorry, going back to India after 15 years of being in the UAE. So this is what he said. The first one, he says, Salary difference here. I'm getting paid one fifth of what I was getting paid in UAE, and this is a very common story. Huh? Uh, the people who leave the UAE when they go back to India, they don't get obviously the UAE-based uh, salary or the exchange rate. They'll obviously get lower. Okay, that's the first point. The second one is a Gulf experience as almost zero value in India, which I've been telling you over and over again. There is no value for whatever designation, whatever position you have in the UAE. In India, it's null and void. Uh, the, one of the best examples I've given in my previous videos is where my close, uh, I wouldn't say close friend, but the guy who I knew very well. He was working as a managing editor for one of the leading magazines. He was a DJ. He was in the advertising uh, you know, um, industry. Uh, he, also, he was also supplying sounds and lights and he was a DJ, okay? So, because the company shut down, because the magazine shut down, he went to India and in India, even though he was a managing editor in UAE, he didn't even get uh, like an editor's job. In fact, he had to start all over from scratch. After literally waiting for two years, he started off as a, I think, clerk or junior or whatever. And it took him roughly six years to claw his way back to something decent. So that was quite a heartbreaking story from someone who I knew personally. So what he says is Gulf experience is almost zero value. Uh, they would see when you did your last work in India. That means when he went to India, they wanted to see when was his last work in India, even if it was in the Stone Age. That's how he has put it. He said, and then point number three, discrimination at the workplace. People would constantly heckle verbally. This is not the Gulf. Ye tera Dubai nahi hai. 
एन आर आई नॉट रिक्वायर्ड इंडियन यहां दिरम मिलने वाला नहीं है भाई ओके दीज आर वेरी कॉमन आई वुड जस्ट से इट्स 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 अदर सैड वे ऑफ ट्राइंग टू बुली समन ट्राइंग टू मेक समन फील लाइक शिट इट्स primarily people whose lives are shit and people who are pieces of shit they feel better making others feel bad okay they they have this sense of oh wow empowerment oh yes i'm making this guy feel like shit so they feel great about themselves and normally they tend to do it in groups they never do it when they are alone or they never do it when nobody else is there they'll do it when they see oh other people are supporting me or they feel empowered that is why for me especially indians you know they they have their courage in groups they'll never have their guts one to one yeah the same thing you can see with the uh, keyboard warriors that are there you know when they are anonymous and they're hidden they talk very big but when they're in front of you they don't talk anything even the even for that matter in pakistan when they had this uh, murder of this uh, poor sri lankan man they did it in groups they would never do it one to one okay so these are cowards who are there in india and um, they can say whatever they want see the you know my answer to these people when they say this is not golf my answer would be um, you know uh, like this in hindi teri okadi kya hai golf jaane ke liye i mean what standards do you have nobody would even give you nobody even spit on your face then they say ye tera dubai nahi hai Uh, you know the typical answer is this is not your father's office you are also an employee in the same position so and then if they would say something like not required indian uh, so yeah you are not required that is why you feel everyone else is not required you are a piece of shit in your house that is why you go on treating others like a piece of shit and then ye diram milne wala nahi hai yeah that is why you are a rupee earning fucking laborer you know shut the fuck up so uh, but the thing is you can't say anything to these uh, you know Uh, low life labor class mentality people because then they'll gang up on you even more because their egos and their pride gets hurt as it is they it's 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 a very fragile ego that they have but when they go you know home and all that they might act like very big or you know nobody gives them a fuck but then remember on the global stage nobody gives a fuck uh, about these individuals then uh, next point he says is among the relatives and your own blood they treat you shabbily uh, reason no golf money no perfumes no chocolates no dry fruits which is very common huh? even when i was uh, young my parents when they would go back to india they would take uh, chocolates perfumes uh, nuts from the dubai duty free and whenever you would land in um, india oh they want to know what you got for them what is nice cashew badam pista this that so for them they look at it as gift so obviously when you come back and you're not going to buy them any more gifts so nobody is there so like i always tell people you know during tough times you come to know who's your real friend and uh, when you don't have money you come to know people's real colors that is why if you actually look at me i dress up like a poor man i i dress up simple and because i like to see how they really act you know if you show you have money obviously everyone will kiss your ass then some will taunt golf return popper uh, some guys uh, Oh, the same guys who once carried me on their shoulders and made me sit on a plane seat when I was going to the golf. <laughs> so I would just say that yes, it's a very painful lesson, but you come to know real colors and use this as an incentive, as the fire, the fuel to push you towards greatness. That's what I would say. Then the next point he says, even if I'm getting a lay, less pay, I live comfortably with my family, and like I tell people. you are the king in your own country you don't need a visa you don't have to be a beggar you don't have to you're not uh, you know your life is not based on uh, a stamp on your passport you know so yes uh, and even if you are not you're not enjoying the job you resign you can go back home you can rest and relax you don't have to worry oh shit i lost my job and now i'm going to be kicked out of the country they're going to throw me out they're going to throw my family out i'll have to pay the bank loan so that is not there Then he said one more point: all your old contacts turn their backs away, whether in Gulf or in India. When you come from GCC and ask for help in finding jobs, yeah, there are two points here. One is uh, contacts and connections only keep in touch with you when you're rich and powerful, when you're famous, when you are of some use to them. That is why, for me, when you know, when today when people kiss my ass and say, "Oh, Lloyd, big fan of yours," you know, I admire you. You know, I admire. 
you're a great guy, you're this, you're that. I, I know because I'm in a position of power today, journalists, today politicians, today rich people, today quite a number of people send me compliments, money and it doesn't get to my head because I've not forgotten in uh, 2011, 2011, you can check my video, Roy Macedo uh, suicide video. I, it's restricted now, by the way, if uh, you're underage, you can't see that if you're below 18. So I, I give a raw footage of what I went through when I didn't have any money and I've not forgotten those days. So when you don't have money, those very same people don't look at your face and I don't blame them because we live in a world where only if you have money, only if you're rich, successful, they want to keep in touch with the others. It's more like fuck off. So but the Gulf of India, it's it's the same people uh, like uh, that. That is why for me, I'm explicit. I tell people I'm not interested in making friends. And if you want to keep in touch with me, if you have money and you can give me money for my time, I'm interested to you know, keep in touch with you. Otherwise, uh, why do I want to keep in touch with the poor people? Because I've seen the color of people, whether poor or rich, if you're of no use to them, they're going to treat you like shit. So I, I keep it as explicit, whether guy or girl, if you're some use to me and I'm used to you, fine. Otherwise, bye bye. Anyways, Loy, uh, I'm off to sleep and, um, you know, to us, whatever he has to do this thing. Uh, please keep my identity confidential. So anyway, uh, the reason why I thought I'd share this with you is because this is also one of the realities among the many of what people go through once they leave UAE and they go back to the uh, Middle East, uh, sorry, once they leave the Middle East and go back to India. So let me know what are your thoughts, what are you feeling um, if you have left the UAE um, and do share it with me because when you do share, I'm able to give this perspective to other people and help them realize that, you know, life in the UAE or the Middle East is not forever. It's a temporary phase. As long as you have the money, contacts, connections, everything fine. But the day you lose it all, you know, it all goes. And that is why I feel it very funny when people say, oh, this is my motherland. Oh, this is <laughs> so funny. My motherland, UAE, my motherland. Yeah, where the day you don't have the money, the day you don't have uh, the visa, motherland becomes motherland, you know, so. <laughs> Anyway, this is what I wanted to share. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? I'd love to hear from you. It's me signing off. You guys take care. Ciao.